Hello everyone. It's good to see so many people here today joining and I'm sure more of you will be joining us later on. Great to be here. So let's slowly get started. So what we are doing today, we are meeting actually to discuss Golang programming language. What we are aiming to discuss today is actually a few things. So we will discuss what Golang is basically and why it's so popular, what are the benefits of Golang and why people uh, need to think about choosing Golang in their products, either existing or the new products. And to support all of those benefits with some specific information, we will try to provide you with, uh, with examples, especially we'll deep dive into go on usage cases uh, in the next part of our agenda today. So we will try to, to show you how go on can be applied to completely new products, as well as how Go can help you in the products that already exist. We will surely mention uh, the costs or limitations of using Golang, uh, either in new products or, or in the existing products. We will try to sum up it all uh, at the end of the session. And of course, we would be eager to hear your questions. So at the end of the, our webinar, we will devote some time to answer all the questions that you might have. So feel free to answer, to ask any questions you might have in the, in the chat. And at the end of the meeting, we will try to devote some time to answering any questions you might have related to GoLang. Now that the agenda is clear and everyone knows exactly what we will be talking about, I'd like to present our expert today. So, David Perikovsky, welcome on board. We are very happy to have you here. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, and I'm happy to be invited. It's an honor to participate in this meeting. And thank you for your trust. Perfect. Thank you, David, for joining us. It's, it's great that you made time to, to talk to, with us about GoLang. Now, David, I understand that GoLang is basically your event of expertise. Is that is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right. But generally, how many years of experience in programming do you have, like in general, or what did you specifically specialize in before you changed to Go? Yeah, sure. So uh, my commercial uh, experience is close to 10 years, uh, but I started coding when I was a teenager okay. and about my specialization before switching to Go. Uh, I work mainly on different types of software, uh, from simple websites to landing pages, <laughs> including some complex ecosystems. Uh, I had also a chance to build a few mobile applications, uh, hybrid and native. So I mainly work with uh, PHP, JavaScript or TypeScript, Java and many others uh, in college or at work while experimenting or prototyping. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that sounds impressive. So you say you have at least 10 years of experience and I know that with Polcode you have been for over six years now. And I do remember that GoLang was introduced to the public in 2009. So when did you first hear about GoLang? Yeah, I think that it was around five years ago. Uh, and okay. in my spare time, I started learning some syntax and basic concepts. Uh, and that's the time when I developed the first uh, command line application. And I was really impressed uh, with that language and agreed to still improve my skills. Sure. Okay. Well, can I ask you, did you also start programming in GoLang with the typical hello world line? <laughs> no, no, not this time. Uh, I've written a lot of different hello words in different uh, languages, so there was <laughs> I had to choose something better. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. But okay, so you are saying that you have quite a vast experience in other programming languages. So why did specifically you choose to to switch GoLang? Oh, that's a really accurate question, and I heard a lot of good things about how Go works, uh, and I wanted to test. If Go was a good fit for the project, then I was working on. Uh, so I wanted to test how it uh, plays with, out with uh, huge traffic and how is it is to write uh, fast, efficient, scalable and cross-platform uh, code. And after using it, I have fallen in love with concurrency model <laughs> and simplicity provided by Go. Uh, so simple syntax and code structure is very clear, clean and easy to read. 
Okay, I see. Well, you basically just revealed all of the benefits that we are about to mention in our webinar further on. So a sneak peek, so to say. <laughs> Happy to hear that. Thank you, David, for sharing that experience. So to pre represent myself, to introduce myself, basically, uh, I am Maria Sapon and I am a product owner here at Polcode. And my main job uh, at Polcode is to conduct product discovery process. So uh, the process of identifying new problems uh, and issues that our clients or users might experience with the, uh, with the product. Um, and typically, whenever I find some uh, issue that can be resolved or can be improved, I come to my development team and we together work for a great solution to solve that problem. And this is exactly how I want this meeting to go so that I will be discussing some problems that some products might might face. And David, will be, I hope you will uh, help me find the proper solution to those problems. Yeah, right. I believe, Maria, that you'll bring me back to the business aspects when I will move to my much uh, into the technical details. Yeah, I'll do my best so that we speak the language <laughs> that will be understandable for everyone. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Great. Okay, so what we will do today, we would uh, cover some of the problems that typical products in e-commerce, fintech, SaaS uh, products face. And um, I hope, David, that you will surely help me and our viewers today understand how exactly GoLang as a programming language can save the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So basically, we, we will discuss typical uh, problem clients coming to pull code uh, and how to solve them. Exactly. exactly, exactly like that. So without further ado, let's simply go into it and start ahead. So uh, we will discuss uh, what GoLang is and what benefits uh, of GoLang exist. So this is the part of the webinar where we will be covering those points. But David, first things first, I need to know. <laughs> When I first heard about GoLang, I heard uh, it being used in the same sentence as Go. And I found it very confusing, like GoLang, Go, is there a difference? Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, great that you brought it up. Because uh, some people find it confusing to uh, Go and GoLang uh, are the same thing. Uh, so uh, when the language was developed, uh, its creators wanted to use simple Go.org domain uh, for the website, but it was already taken. So they decided to launch golang.org domain instead of. And also after time, it they realized that it's far easier for people to search for related resources using Golang. So Go and Golang became interchangeable. I'm happy that you cured it, that you cured that up because it caused some confusion indeed. So dear viewers, we will be uh, change, we will be using both titles, GoLang and Go interchangeable. Please remember that we refer to the same programming language. Exactly. Great. Okay. Now, David, I know that Go uh, as a programming language was was basically created at Google and by Google and for Google products actually. But do you know why exactly they decided to create another language? Uh, it was actually developed in 2007, uh, so two years before it was presented to the public. Um, the creators wanted to develop a language that would combine the ease and speed with efficiency and safety of compiled language. Okay, I see. Okay, well, that sounds reasonable uh, indeed. But I hope we will not go into much details what GoLang is and the history of creation. It uh, this is something that uh, that is um, widely uh, accessible. But I'm sure our viewers can also refer to your recent article that you published on uh, Polcode's web page, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, in my article, Efficiency Meets Flexibility, uh, I share many more tips on Go uh, besides its history, and I really recommend it because it gives you an overview of GoLang in a nutshell. Exactly. So I encourage our viewers to visit the link that has been just shared to you in our chat. This is the article that uh, David recently ha has written, uh, and it covers uh, all of the basics. Perfect. Okay. So now that that we covered that, uh, I'd like to um, 
to switch into discussing the, the benefits of, of Go, basically. And I know that Go in general aims at simplicity and efficiency and concurrency. So, so it, it tries to uh, manage all of those multiple tasks that, uh, uh, that are being done at the same time. And it's a huge plus for products uh, in, industries, in industries such as fintech or e-commerce or banking. So I bet that bi most business owners are actually looking for the way to, uh, to allow their systems uh, process multiple tasks at the same time. So to, to go with a concurrency. Do you agree, David? Yeah, absolutely. And that is also why Google created it in, in the first place. And that is why Meta, Netflix, Twitter, Twitch, and many more uh, choose this language. And it's a key uh, to have a simple solution and easy to maintain, uh, would make uh, business go faster and serve uh, many more users. Absolutely. That's exactly the key. And I actually remember such, such a situation, David. It was widely discussed in product management community when just pandemic hit um, in, back in 2020. Um, we were obliged to stay at home and, you know, the majority of uh, people were watching uh, Netflix shows, of course. And I actually do remember that Netflix had uh, some kind of an issue with all of those multiple users watching shows at the same time so that the uh, servers were actually overloaded. Do you recall that situation? Yes, I remember that. Uh, most likely with the help of code, they were able to scale their uh, components in the infrastructure on demand uh, when high traffic occurred. So uh, Go is a perfect solution for such a case when you have to handle a lot of unexpected peak of active users and huge bandwidth. which uh, of course it's only possible when the infrastructure is ready for that, right. uh, but they made it right. Okay, so that's that sounds impressive that those big tech companies like Netflix were able to use Go in such cases. But uh, let's let's take a, a, a sideway path, so to say, because our viewers here might think that Go applies only to such huge products as Netflix and and the ones that we are presenting on the screen. But Go can actually be used in products of any sizes, right? Yeah, right. Uh, and I can't stress enough that Go is applicable uh, to products of any size. Uh, and it's just a matter of what spe specifically you're after. Uh, so Go, Go can be very helpful uh, in your product, uh, no matter if it's uh, already created or it's a brand new idea. Perfect. Excellent. Good. So to give our viewers a better overview of how exactly they can benefit from using GoLang in their products, let's probably switch into discussing those advantages of GoLang. Sounds good to you? Yeah, sure. So uh, let's go. Um, so the first and the key uh, point is speed and application performance. The second thing, easy on the memory uh, because of uh, garbage collection feature. Um, third thing, fast to learn. And also simplicity in development and application maintenance. That's mm -hmm. also a really important point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is very important, simplicity and development in, uh, and app maintenance in general, because due to that, business owners can simply save money and time in delivery, right? Exactly, uh, that's true, uh, because infrastructure uh, may be uh, huge and Go can help with allocating uh, resources effectively. And, and the next point um, and the next benefit of Go is scalability and concurrency. And uh, it's what Netflix did uh, when right. they got a huge peak of uh, active users. Yeah, and right. the last one thing for now, uh, application reliability. Uh, you need to trust your application. So it needs to be stable and produce uh, expected results. Absolutely, I can't stress that, that part enough because according to the recent researches, um, a lot of users simply lose their trust into in products that are not stable enough or do not perform uh, well. So it's very important to have uh, an, an, a reliable application to gain your users' trust. Exactly. Great. Okay, David. So we briefly mentioned the most um, common benefits of GoLang, but I think we do really need to go into more details. And you said it yourself that probably one of the most important um, benefits of GoLang is speed and application performance. Could you elaborate on that, please? 
Yeah, sure. So one of the uh, main reasons uh, why Go was developed uh, uh, that Google developers needed a faster and more efficient uh, language to use. And uh, Go is really a swift language for, uh, from both ends. I mean, when it, com when it com uh, comes to application speed and uh, build time, uh, since Go can be directly translated into the machine code um, using an effective compiler, uh, so entire code can be compiled much faster and optimized for uh, the environment where uh, where it runs, uh, because in some cases it, it could uh, take you hours to compile the code in uh, some other languages. But in the, with help of Go, it's possible to to compile even uh, large programs uh, in a much shorter time comparing to other compiled uh, languages. Yeah, that sounds like a time saver and, and of course, money saver, right? To, to be able to compile, uh, compile code much quicker than in, in other languages, because that basically means that at some point we are able to build some products in Go and simply more effectively than in, let's say, in, in Java or in Python. So that sounds great to me. Yeah, that's true. But as well, you mentioned that Go is very simple in development uh, and, and in maintenance. So why is that? Yeah, sure. that's true. Uh, Go is an open source uh, programming language uh, that allows you to contribute uh, to the source code, uh, but probably you don't have to because their code base is stable enough and well tested in practice by huge and smaller companies. Okay, okay. But we, uh, you also said that it's like open source programming language, right? So just you, you ask me to uh, to stop you whenever you are going to much technical details. So let's take a step back uh, for our viewers and explain to them what an open source programming language is. Yeah, uh, good that you ask. Uh, so open source means uh, various plugins, standards, libraries, and other tools uh, created by uh, other developers and shared with you. Um, you can use uh, them for free, uh, of course, keeping in mind uh, the license rules. Okay, so what you are saying, basically, let me rephrase, is that in a secure way, we are able to use ready-made components that we are built by, by somebody else. And basically, you do not need to write that component, component by, by yourself. You can simply uh, adopt it into your code in your product, which means that you uh, end up saving time and money. Sounds exactly. good to me. Sounds good to me. Okay. On top of that, uh, you mentioned that Go comes with scalability and concurrency, and I am sure that uh, it's uh, one of the most important benefits that Go offers because some products do require to scale either uh, some in the same time in the future or already from the time they are being created. So Go is great for both cases, right? Yes, uh, if you build with scalability in mind, we spoke briefly uh, about going being concurrent. Uh, so your product must be able to support multiple uh, user requests, actions, and tasks uh, performed at the same time. Okay, okay, I see that. Now, probably let's get let's give our viewers some uh, specific examples so that it is easier for everyone to relate to scalability and concurrence and other benefits of GoLang. So. Uh, Let's imagine a situation where we have an e-commerce shop, let's say it's some kind of a um, clothing in e-shop. E um, and, you know, uh, whenever a seasonal promotion or black sale, per, uh, sale comes, um, such web pages are typically very much overloaded because with black sale come uh, huge huge promotions and all people want uh, is to browse the web page to see what's what's in it what products they they want to buy to add those products to the cart you know to check out and to receive notifications about the process of of uh, of purchasing and delivering that product to them so i understand that go on can be helpful here too yeah, of course. Uh, what uh, Go can do in such a case, uh, it can queue uh, incoming requests and processing them uh, using great uh, Go concurrency model. Of course, it's a simplification, uh, but well, uh, it's built really simple without overhead and it can handle a lot of multiple requests in really efficient, uh, cost-effective way. Um, and if it's not enough, your infrastructure can scale horizontally on demand uh, and handle those requests at the speed of light. Okay, so what you said about infrastructure uh, really um, sounds interesting to me because 
correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, basically whenever uh, I have this black sale going on in my shop, what Go can do with proper with proper uh, infrastructure is to uh, be able to manage that high traffic and accordingly you will be paying for the infrastructure. But once that huge traffic is gone, black sale is over, you will not need to pay more for your infrastructure because Go will help to scale it down, right? Yeah, you got it right. Perfect. Okay, brilliant. That sounds uh, exactly like uh, a solution I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, David, I, I think we started with some examples already, but uh, we promised our viewers that we would discuss specific case studies. Um, so I think it's high time for us to present those, right? Yeah, sure. And this way we'll be able to show that Go is applicable at any stage of product, uh, product development. Perfect. Exactly. Because we will discuss today two case studies. One case study it was created for a product that is only about to be created, so it doesn't exist yet. And the other one is uh, a case study for the product that already is on the market and requires some changes. And we will, of course, start with the new product. And I know how about yourself, David, but I always find it fascinating when I am able to start working on a completely new product from, from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. A new product. It sounds like a blank white paper that you can showcase your passion and, I mean, uh, draw your solutions into it. Uh, it's always best to start simple and develop the application to match the growing needs. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, best practices of product development tell us that we need to start small and build up, right? But, you know, when we start building our MVP, so minimal viable product, we usually dream big. And sometimes products that, that have, we actually can build some products that have very much um, potential, simple as that. Um, so we need to build them already with scalability in mind so that they can handle big scale operations in future. Uh, that's true. Uh, in some cases, we need to build a brand new product uh, that will be ready to manage uh, big uh, user activity together with smooth performance. Exactly. So at the beginning of our webinar, I mentioned to you and to our viewers, since my role uh, is, a, uh, is a role of a product owner and I typically look for different issues or simply analyze how the product is supposed to be functioning, what I'd like to do right now, David, is to <laughs> role play, so to say. So mm -hmm. we will imagine uh, that I uh, come to you with a specific product and you will try to help me find a solution for that product. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, this is actually a brilliant idea. Uh. Perfect. Okay, so let's deep deep dive into it. So the first, uh, the first case that we would like to discuss is a, a case where we will be building a retail and production management software. So I want you to imagine that uh, me myself, I am a, a manufacturer. So I am a, a furniture manufacturer, basically, and. Um, what I'm doing uh, uh, is that uh, I uh, supply my pro production uh, to the Western Euro Union uh, mainly, and I specialize in office furniture. So what I want to do right now, I want to go online so that my people, so the, the clients of mine will be able to see my products online. They will be able to order and pay for them and simply be informed about everything that's happening to their order. Oh. Yeah, and this is actually a really awesome uh, idea and taking to the account that nowadays people tend to work from home, uh, they will need uh, office set up like a desk, maybe a comfortable chair. Uh, this product has a big potential. I know, right? So that's exactly what, what why I'm, I'm thinking about creating such a, such a, uh, such a product. Now, the problems that I fa face here, there are several actually, and I'll start with the first one. So uh, since I am a, a furniture manufacturer, I have my own fact factory. So I have a production line. It's quite big actually. And previously what I did I was supplying uh, my, uh, my products in mass supplies to, to companies. What I want to do right now, I want to switch to selling my products to single clients, so to single users, because of what you exactly said, right? So that people want to be to be able to set up their home offices. So 
in this case, what will be my first step? Yeah, uh, if I see your point, the first step will be to create uh, an online shop, uh, so an e-commerce uh, website where people will be able to see your products and uh, order either single unit or maybe a multiple quantities. Perfect. Okay, this is exactly what I want because I want to be able to um, allow my clients to order in mass quantities and as well as those single items. So that sounds perfect to me. But another problem that I, I might have is that since I was working mainly with, with companies where I was supplying the office furniture to them, uh, the, the process of taking orders and uh, processing them and passing them to, to my factory, to my production line, was actually quite manual. I had to do it all by myself. So I have currently at my factory different uh, stations where every station is responsible for a different stage of furniture production. And I would like to automate it somehow. Is there, is there some way that Golan can help me so that I'm not for further involved? Oh, oh, for sure. Uh, and Go can be great there. Uh, I'm a fan of any automation that can save you time for other things that you really like. Yeah, same here. But, so you say Go Go would be great here. How exactly? Uh, so, uh, so for example, Go can take the single or mass orders people make on your platform uh, and divide each one into the smaller process. Uh, then Go, depending on uh, each smaller process, will pass appropriate information to the corresponding uh, production station. So imagine that each uh, production station uh, has its own uh, application uh, where they see what they uh, need to do to complete the order. Uh, this way, uh, each production line knows exactly uh, what they are responsible for and you can track the status of the order at, at each station separately. Brilliant. Okay, so people will be ordering their uh, furniture uh, on my online shop and my online shop will communicate the order to my so-called production management software and it will separate it into smaller processes. Great, I will no, no further be involved. That sounds amazing to, to me. But I said that I had several problems here. So another thing is that Imagine, uh, David, that I have already started my online shop and I have my production management software ready. Uh, you know, market is changeable. So what if in future I decide to add new products to both to my online shop and to my production management software? So it will be a completely new uh, furniture that I will be designing, maybe even adjustable desks because of what you said in home office. What do you think? Can Go and help me here too by adding those new products to, to my shop? Yeah, for sure. Because so when you're building from the scratch and you can design it to, uh, to scale, uh, and uh, Go can help, of course, with scalability to new markets and, and expanding uh, to target audience and, of course, extend your portfolio of products. Okay, so that's that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I will be able to add new products, and you said it yourself about it, about markets. So that's great. So I will be op uh, able to open my uh, my uh, pr products uh, for not only in the Western Europe as I'm doing it right now, but probably for the whole Europe. But what if my business goes so well and I'm selling to all Europe that now I want to open another factory? How can those two factories communicate between each other? Yeah, for sure you can reuse uh, Go uh, across all factories uh, you own uh, and share the same process. And even some uh, factories uh, may have some custom rules uh, depending on the market they serve. So basically with help of Go, we can build scalable and reliable product for both from the uh, e-commerce users and production lines. That's exactly what I'm looking for, so that uh, I can scale both of my uh, platforms that I'm building here for my users, so for my clients and uh, and for my production lines. Excellent. Okay, well, you also mentioned that, that we are able to automate things here. What I am trying to achieve here is that uh, the information about each order is being processed properly, so that I want myself and my clients to be informed about what exactly is happening to their product. So can Go do that too? 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, and what uh, your application does in your, uh, in such a case, uh, it tracks the stage of the item manufacturer and reports back to the system admin. Uh, so you can, so you and our, and the person who order it, uh, the item, uh, it's a real time communication between you or production and the person who order it. Okay, so in real time, my clients and me myself will have full visibility of, of the status of, of the order. So amazing. That sounds good. The last question that I might have here, uh, David, is that what if it happens quite quite a lot, actually, what if I'm producing some order and while I'm producing uh, some piece of furniture, um, it comes to the fact that I'm missing some piece of item. So if I miss something, my, some piece of item to mm -hmm. finish my order, can go somehow notify me about that so that I'm aware? Yeah, for sure. It's only about application logic that applies into it. Uh, but of course, your application can also check for the stock and see if, for example, there are any missing details uh, that need to be fulfilled uh, the order and notify a responsible person to order it maybe or produce it. So uh, in the, that way, uh, order can be delivered in time. Excellent. So again, uh... What from what you have told me, I will be able to achieve many things here with the Go. I will be able to first of all scale my online shop uh, together with my production management software, which means that I will be able to add new uh, furniture pieces of furniture to my production line, to my portfolio, to open up for new markets, uh, so to expand my business, and of course to at additional factories uh, so that um, I'm able to satisfy the needs of my uh, users and my clients. And I really love the, the things that, that go on can help me automate the whole process so that I'm less involved and you know I can rely on the system that everything has been taken care of and I have real-time communication between me, myself, product, production line and my end clients. Yeah, Sounds exactly. Amazing. That's on Exactly, that sounds really great. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. Great, David. So with that case study being discussed, I hope our viewers can slightly have the picture already of how Golan can help them uh, to build their products from scratch. So completely new products when you have uh, in mind that your product in future would need to scale um, and, and perform those kind of uh, concurrent tasks and of course uh, take care of the real-time communication it would be your choice sounds great now we promised of course to cover um, the case study for the existing product and that's exactly what I would like to do. And again, we will role play, David. So you will be imagining that uh, that I come to you with some existing product. I'm an owner of that product, and you will try to help me understand how Go and can can help me in my case. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Good. Now, to start ahead, um, let's imagine a situation that uh, I am a founder. I am a founder of a cryptocurrency exchange platform and uh, I have over 50, 15 different cryptocurrencies on my platform that users can exchange on the platform and withdraw to their private wallets, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds really cool. Good, okay, I'm happy to hear that because, you know, in, that's an interesting topic, I hope. FinTech is always hot, special cryptocurrency world. So, exactly. What's happening yeah. right now, David? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking because it sounds really promising and crypto is always a hot topic. Uh, so indeed, it's really interesting. Um, exactly. Blockchain and all technical aspects, just, you know, a lot of things. Definitely, exactly. So I hope this will be useful for our users if, and for our viewers. So um, me as an owner of my uh, cryptocurrency exchange platform, um, I'm actually trying to promote it quite actively and due mm -hmm. to promotion and, and of course, uh, us being so reliable as we are, we are gaining more and more trust among our users. And I've noticed that um, recently uh, quite a number of our users are performing high volume transactions. And I'm wondering if Golan can help me with, um, with processing those high volume transactions. 
Yeah, for sure. It sounds like a perfect job for a Golang and cloud native application, uh, which can handle high volume transaction. Uh, as we mentioned uh, in previous uh, use case, uh, Go concurrency feature allow uh, to handle a lot of um, many requests at the at once, uh, improving the overall performance and response uh, of the system. Okay, so that means that uh, Golang can help you with not only main managing high traffic in, in, in terms of many users doing many tasks, but as well high volume transactions. That's That sounds amazing to me. Now, uh, what, what I'm trying to achieve here is that I told you that uh, we are trying to promote our services, of course, and uh, I want my uh, platform to be as reliable as possible especially in in moments when there is some kind of a price fluctuation because you know whenever a crypto goes up my users start selling and the platform performance is not great at that time that simply causes user frustration because of how platform yeah. of slower platform performance so will I be able to improve that too yeah, of course, because with uh, Go's uh, focus on concurrency and scalability, uh, Go uh, cloud native application uh, can easily scale uh, horizontally to meet demand uh, and also reduce uh, infrastructure costs by scaling back when traffic is low. Okay, so that's exactly the case that we dis discussed in our first case study. So whenever the traffic is low, we have lower cost of in infrastructure if it's set up correctly. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and that's true. Um, uh, if you prepare your infrastructure to to work together with uh, Golang, uh, major advantages uh, serving a high performance application in the cloud. Overall, the use of Golang can be helpful uh, to ensure that application can provide fast, reliable, and secure services to its user. And secure is really important topic and key factor in cryptocurrency exchange platform. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's very good that you already mentioned uh, the security point. Can you help me understand how Golan can can ensure better security too? Oh, that's right. That's a really important question. Uh, if an application is built in security in mind, uh, with the help of Go, uh, it must be stable and secure, let's call it. Uh, of course, to accomplish this, uh, strong encryption, uh, secure coding practices, and secure communication protocols should be used. Uh, and Go comes with robust standard, uh, standards library, uh, built-in testing tools, uh, strict type checking, what makes it safe and secure choice for or been building complex solution. And security is really uh, a key point when dealing with vulnerable things. So also please don't forget about proper infrastructure. Uh, and if you're interested in the topic of infrastructure, follow our blog uh, bec because in the next week we'll publish an article about Amazon Web Services and costs. Oh, that sounds intriguing. Perfect, okay. Good, so I'm happy that you cleared up how important it is uh, to, to have proper security, especially in products connected to FinTech. So that's one of the most important aspects. And I'm happy that you stress how important it is to set up um, proper infrastructure for the GoLang to do its job properly. So it sounds amazing. Now, I mentioned uh, as well to you, uh, David, that uh, on my platform, on my cryptocurrency exchange platform, it, it is quite a common thing that whenever there is a price fluctuation, there is high high demand uh, of user traffic. Mm, but what I'm actually uh, thinking about adding to my uh, product is a live notification so that I want my users to be able to receive a live notification when there is a, a change in price in cryptocurrencies so that they know when they need to sell or hold or maybe buy another cryptocurrency. So I expect hundreds of thousands of users to be able to receive that notification at, at the same time. Is that doable? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Go is uh, great for real-time processing. Thanks to its built-in uh, concurrency uh, features and support for asynchronous programming, uh, you can easily process large amounts of data in real time, uh, making it perfect uh, for handling notifications about the price changes uh, on your cryptocurrency exchange platform. And connecting it uh, together with previously mentioned scalability makes an, an ideal pair for such a challenge. Okay, sounds exactly what, what I'm looking for. So uh, I'm almost convinced that Go is uh, is a perfect solution for my product, but I have 
one more additional uh, thing that I'd like to, for us to discuss. So, you know, fintech and, and special cryptocurrency is a very dynamic industry. It just needs to be uh, going uh, further uh, as, as quickly as possible. And I need to stay abreast of my competition. And I probably would like to deliver a all of those solutions as fast as possible because time to market factor is is crucial here can go help me speed it up yeah that sounds like a perfect fit for a go uh cloud native application uh built using uh, microservices architecture with continuous integration or continuous delivery tools uh, can help her here uh, and go allows the developers to quickly build and deploy microservices uh, that can easily integrate with existing monolithic systems or other microservices, providing great flexibility and agility to your organization. Uh, what means uh, that you get uh, fast time to market for new features uh, and also fast reaction to any bugs. Sounds amazing. Okay. Sounds exactly like, like what I'm looking for. And uh, I actually see that there are some questions popping up in our chat, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And some of those questions actually relate to what I'm about to ask you, uh, mm -hmm. because you know, this is an existing product. So my cryptocurrency exchange platform is already an existing product and I have never used here Golang. So my, my platform is built in a completely different language. Would there be an, uh, any issue to, to add Golang to my existing product since it's not built in Golang? And maybe not an issue um, because Go can be adapted uh, and used together with other parts of your existing system written in any other languages like Java, PHP, Python, no matter if it's monolithics or microservice. If you just adjust the both systems to meet your requirements, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, of course, it's just a matter of uh, some designing and architecture preparations for that. It's also worth to mention that Go provides a way to call some other code written in C, C++, or maybe assembly language. Okay, okay. That sounds amazing to me. So I think that uh, in my existing prod uh, products, in my cryptocurrency exchange platform, I will be able to achieve with Go many things because, first of all, it can be used with other languages. So that that's that's great. Of course, we need to be careful about that. But this is something that we are able to do, definitely. I will be able to achieve better uh, performance with, with, by, by doing which I will gain more trust of my users. I will be able to scale uh, not only when it comes to high traffic of users, but also to high volume transactions. Go will help me uh, provide a secure solution for my users. So I'm very happy to hear that because uh, fintech and cryptocurrency world is, is, is surely, um, surely needs that kind of a feature. And I, I really enjoyed that we will be able to uh, communicate some things in real time to our users, uh, which will not cause the slow performance of applications. So it sounds, sounds perfect to me. That also sounds, sounds perfect to me. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, David. So I hope those two use cases about the existing product and the new product and how Go can help in the specific situations and the problems that I discussed together with David today uh, have given our viewers a better picture of what can be achieved with Go. But we surely need to speak, David. It would not be fair to our viewers if we didn't speak about Go limitations. So what cannot be speaking yeah, that's true. Go? Right. So let's start with the first one. OK, so first limitation. Uh, in some cases, uh, time con uh, it may be time consuming and frustrating if you need to build something really big and advanced from the scratch. In some other cases, especially when it comes to building MVP, and realizing them quickly to the market. Go might be not the right choice at this stage, but it really depends on each uh, scenario and each project, because sometimes it's worth to uh, in invest your time uh, to build something with Go. Uh, of course, uh, each situation uh, we need to treat separately, right? You're right. Okay. Because this is good that you're mentioning this because in our first case study, we spoke about how Go, Go can be applied to a completely new product. But that's very important that you stressed it, that Go might not be the best solution for every new product. So you need to really think about what exactly you're after to make sure that Go is not an overkill. Exactly. Uh, Sounds and amazing. 
Mm -hmm. And the second limitation, uh, well, uh, Golang libraries are not so advanced, but I mean, Go is a relatively new programming language, and there might be a miss of some third-party integration. Of course, keeping in mind that we can use some C, C++ code, it can be extended, uh, but well, uh, it's constantly evolving and uh, adding, uh, and community is adding more value to Goblang's world, so we can expect more uh, libraries coming soon, right? Excellent. Okay, so though this is a, an open source language, it, indeed, it's relatively new compared to the languages that you mentioned, so I, I'm sure it will be evolving quickly. Great. Any other limitations, David? Yeah, sure. The next limitation, or maybe, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's limitation because uh, uh, you need to find some proper solution for your case, specific case. So let's say it like this. If you need to start some product, uh, the first thing that you need to do is some research because maybe it may be really helpful to start with researching to achieve the goal. Um, and as, as you can see on the screen on our presentation, well, uh, Go has no founded its speciality, right? Exactly. That's true. But this is exactly what you said, uh, that to make sure that Go is applicable and can be an advantage for your specific prob product or problem in your existing pro product, it's better to, uh, to really think uh, about how it can help uh, your situation. And I must admit that the best solution is, of course, not simply to research the internet because different things can be found online. But the best thing is, of course, to reach out to a reliable technical partner. So to find someone you can trust who is uh, technical enough to answer your uh, your needs. And of course, to analyze what you exactly need, because a good and reliable technical partner definitely needs to understand exactly what your business is about, what your requirements are and, and the goal of the product uh, in general. So, so that a partner can um, understand what are the benefits of imp implementing GoLang into your product, especially in terms of uh, time management and uh, cost management, and simply see what's the best solution for your specific situation. This is exactly why we here at Power Code would like to offer everyone who is present here today to every viewer who has signed up for our webinar a free of charge consultation. So if you are in doubt and thinking if your um, prob problem that you are facing or your product in general uh, can take advantage of what uh, GoLang offers, then simply reach out to us after our webinar and we will be able to answer any questions you might have regarding GoLang, uh, analyze your specific case and your needs, and maybe advise you if GoLang is indeed a great solution here or maybe in any uh, other um, programming language or any other uh, way out would be more preferable for your specific situation. So feel free to reach out and, and just use the possibility uh, of chatting with our experts like David and, and uh, our team. And I'm sure we'll be able to answer all your questions. Good, with that being said, I'd like David probably to smooth or go into summary. Sounds good? Yeah, let's go through it. Okay, okay. so I would like to summarize first thing. As we said before, uh, Go is relatively new programming language, but it's still gaining uh, popularity in big tech uh, companies and small businesses, and community is still growing. Uh, so it's looking really good in my opinion. Absolutely, and and since it is growing and you know gaining popularity, it's also growing uh, just because of its simplicity and how it is easy to learn and read the, this code. So that's definitely a plus. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, Golang can help you with uh, building any products, to, let's say. You, you can see examples on the screen like fintech, e-commerce, streaming platforms, software as, software as a service, and many other. Absolutely. But I'd like to, to underline this important piece of information to all of our viewers. If you are uh, definitely looking for a better performance of your application, if you want to scale your product or simply build a more uh, cost-efficient uh, efficient infrastructure, then probably GoLang is your choice. But to make sure, it's always better to consult a technical partner. 
That's true. Good. Okay. So with that all being said, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we try to cover uh, the most important parts of uh, using GoVan in, in uh, products like uh, e-commerce and fintech and other um, and products uh, which are high demanding. And we are ready to switch into our Q&A session. Unfortunately, we do not have that much time. So we will try to answer some of the questions that you have. But please, dear viewers, remember that you have free of charge consultation. So if your question left, is left unanswered, feel free to reach out to us and, and ask that, that question. We will be happy to provide you the answer to it. Good. OK. David, um, is there any question that you're looking at that you you feel like answering right now that we have time for that? Yeah, sure. I, I will pick one for now and we'll see how it goes. So uh, sure. first question, uh, most of e-commerce are based on PHP. Uh, can you compare these two languages on uh, which fields go with better choice than PHP for e-commerce? I would say that for sure, uh, the main difference, uh, PHP is interpreted language, right? Uh, Golang is compiled language. And it gives a lot of difference when it comes to performance. So for sure, some elements of your system could be built using uh, Golang, and some of them still can use PHP. It's just a matter what kind of bottleneck you have currently, uh, just answering a little further about this question. Uh, but I think that that summarize a little the main difference. Of course, uh, there are many more, but let's focus on this. Uh, I see one more question. Uh, we can scale horizontally different languages like Python, .NET, even PHP. Uh, it's more of an uh, infrastructure issue. Uh, what's the key features that will uh, make scaling easier? All right, so uh, first of all, that's true that you can scale any language, almost any language, uh, but with help of Go, you can scale it more effect effectively. Yeah, because for example, uh, Go images, when you build your application are really small, you don't have any so much dependencies, let's say. So you also get some better security uh, uh, options uh, when you release applications with uh, Go. Um, and also in terms of speed, there is uh, a big difference, but of course, each case should be reviewed separately. So I'm just trying to answer in general. Um, yeah, so I hope that I answers your question. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, I'm just wondering if we are able to answer the question that Maria mm -hmm. has uh, also written here, because I think it's a very interesting question regarding mm -hmm. our first uh, case study. So uh, mm -hmm. basically, Maria is asking us um, if in our case study we speak about opening a new factor in how Go can help us mm -hmm. and why specifically Go would be a better choice for opening a new factory and making it work with other factories in line or it would be better to choose a different language here. Do you mm -hmm. think, David, that Peter will be able to answer Maria's question? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's try. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, from my perspective, uh, you can almost achieve the same goal uh, with different languages, but uh, with different effort, let's say. Yeah, in that case, uh, if we start with a new product, relatively new product, and we are we have plans to expand, right? So we are planning a lot of the traffic that we need to handle. We are also uh, thinking about uh, going outside, uh, I mean, to other regions or other markets. I think that the goal is better choice for that option, but of course, it really depends on each scenario um, and each product, right? Because maybe you'll find better uh, fit in other language, right? If you will find some already existing solution that you can pick and use and start with your business, right? That's a different option. But if you need to uh, start from the scratch and you will find the right partner, in my opinion, personally, I would suggest starting with Go, yeah? <laughs> Great, I, th I think that's exactly the answer. So to sum it up, that all depends on the on the case, right? We uh, mentioned that Go in our case study would be better for opening a new factory because of the uh, quite a number of other problems that we were trying to solve together with that problem. So this is why we uh, saw that uh, in our case study, Go would be better. But probably in a different scenario, uh, in a different product where you're opening a new factory, 
go might be not be the, firm, the perfect uh, solution. That's why it's so important to study each case by case to see if go is really here helpful or indeed another language can be applied. So again, Maria, I'm just encouraging you to use our life uh, one on one consultation if, if you're uh, if you're up to it. Thank you. Okay, I'm just thinking if we have another uh, couple of minutes for answering any other uh, mm -hmm. questions, because we are actually running out of time. What do you say, David? Do, do we have the chance? Yeah, let's try. I see two questions that I will try to answer. Uh, first one, uh, how does it uh, go Lang's concurrency model differ from other programming languages and what benefits does it uh, offer in terms of performance and scalability? Okay, so first of all, to compare to other languages, there, are, there is a lot of languages, but let's uh, pick, for example, Java. Uh, when, we, uh, talking, when we are talking about concurrency model, uh, the solution in GoLang is uh, really lightweight uh, because each uh, operation in co each concurrency thread uh, takes approximately around two, two kilobytes. But for example, if you compare it with Java, uh, it takes one megabyte. So for example, <laughs> you can uh, use a lot of uh, threads uh, on Golang and you are not going to go outside memory limit that you have and you can handle more, right? So you can spawn, spawn a lot of uh, 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 concurrent operations that will be processed in the middle of when your CPU is not busy. Um, I hope that it answers to your question. And the last one thing that I think we'll try to answer, you said that Go is open source and relatively new programming language. Isn't that unsafe? Uh, that's a very really accurate question. But well, in terms of if we are looking at the Golang that is open source, I think that it's a big plus because let's compare it to another language. If you have everything closed and you can access the code and anyone can see it, in my opinion, in this option is much more unsafe. In the case, if we have access to uh, Golang uh, code, there is a lot of people, uh, hobbyists or any other interested in that topic, going deeper into the engine, studying some solutions, proposing. Uh, so personally, I would say that open sourcing and language which was really, really accurate decision uh, made by Google. Absolutely. Additionally, whenever you use a ready-made component from one from the community and apply it into your code, that doesn't mean that someone else has access to your code. So it's completely safe to use uh, something that someone else has already prepared. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, our dear viewers, thank you so much for your questions. We apologize for not answering all of those, but we are running out of time. So uh, I do encourage all of you to um, use the chance and uh, reach out to us uh, at the end uh, uh, of this webinar or after the webinar uh, to use your free of charge uh, consultation. Uh, and I'm sure our experts, uh, as David and, and our team, will be able to answer your questions, any questions that you might additionally have. So on that note, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, David, you for participation. So it was great to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for our, your attention and see you on personal free one-on-one -on -one consultation. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Thank you so much, dear viewers. I hope this was enjoyable and you would use your, your uh, free consultation with us too. In case of any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We will be happy to help you. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.